Happy Workout Wednesday, my friends. I have <laughs> come to terms with the fact that you can find workouts pretty much anywhere, and I love that, and it makes me really happy, and I love seeing all of these different places, even especially here locally, all of these different places opening doors and having a plethora of classes and all of these trainers available for people to work out. But that is only one piece of the puzzle. So Workout Wednesday might look a little bit different from now on or occasionally, and I might throw in a little bit of different things here or there. But like I said, working out is just one very small piece of the puzzle. Biggs agrees with me. <laughs> and that's because it's like going to the doctor. If you go to the doctor and you're only looking at one specific thing. So thyroid problems. Thyroid problems right now are like epidemic levels. I have worked with so many women over the last couple of years. And, you know, right as we start getting into things, I find they are on medication for some sort of thyroid disorder. So I got super curious about this. I wanted to study it really significantly. So I really have been studying it a lot. This was a, another motivating factor behind getting my holistic lifestyle coaching certification. And honestly, it's a fancy name for saying, look at the body as a whole. So that's kind of where we're failing ourselves with our workouts and our physical fitness because it's not just that. It's a big factor in why I don't do a lot of that anymore. I don't do, you know, I love classes. I think that they're amazing. I think they're super fun and it's a great way to build community with other people. But we've got to look at our bodies as a whole and it's hard to do in a setting like that. So I love working with people one-on-one, -on -one, working holistically, getting down to the, the nitty gritty, down to, you know, not just, okay, I have this thyroid problem, what should I do? But all the way back. So what's happening with a lot of people is stress. And I think a big problem and a big thing is we think that we're not supposed to be that stressed. Like, well, I, I mean, I don't have it that bad. I'm not going to lose my house. I have a good job. I have a good family. I have friends. I shouldn't be this stressed. Well, the fact of the matter is that doesn't actually change what's happening inside of your body. So it is a, a part of our autonomic nervous system. So there are two pieces of that. Biggs is super interested in what I'm talking about right now. So there, your autonomic nervous system is the part of the parts of your body that work and are not regulated by your like normal conscious thought. I don't actively tell myself consciously how to digest my food or to sweat or to breathe, things like that. So that nervous system has two parts, the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system is the part that expends energy and breaks down tissue. So that would be like the good sympathetic nervous system would be like working out. But the sympathetic nervous system is also our fight or flight system. So it's like survival mode. It's what kicks in and says, we're in danger, there's a bear or a lion or a tiger behind us chasing us. Our bodies don't know the difference in that. Like there is a bear behind me and just the stress that we feel that's like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna get enough work done with, with so little childcare? The, these are the things that you know I stress about or you know, how do I balance my work life and my home life and doing all the, all the things with mom and all the things with my business. So that kind, that level of stress, that anxiety is the same. My body doesn't know the difference in that and if a bear were chasing me. So we have a tendency to really get stuck in this sympathetic nervous system. Our parasympathetic system facilitates digestion and elimination and um, inflammation, immune function, the repair processes, the growth processes. So it has to be balanced with both. The problem is 
we are heavily on the sympathetic side, most of us. We are stressed and then we are working out in a way that is compounding more stress on our body and nothing's ever getting a break. Our thyroids, our adrenal glands, we're hitting you know, the middle part of the day and drinking more coffee, our, our adrenal glands can't hang with it and then we're, we're topping it all off with an intense workout one, two, three hours. I mean, I'm seeing women who are hitting the gym and I love to see it, but I also want to see them balance that out and take care of themselves in the whole picture, mentally, physiology, psychology, emotions, all of it. It, it has to come together and work together. So I really want to focus some of my workout Wednesdays on Ways that are moving that aren't necessarily your typical like heavy hitting workout. I you know I gotta work out because it will also work. That the cortisol, the stress. So when cortisol you know skyrockets and it stays there for long periods of time, that is where you'll start seeing fat build up right around the belly button. So if that is where you see you have excess storage of fat right around the belly button, I, I really want you to focus on and think about how much of that might be coming from stress because you know we blame the food a lot. We blame the fact that we think we need to work out more, but take a step back and look at the reality of stress. And that's not just to say like stress the way that we think it's supposed to be. You know, it doesn't have to be like, I'm gonna lose my house or my job tomorrow. It can be stress on the body it's equal there's you know there's no there's no big 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 stress and little little stress it's just stress so definitely take that into effect and i want to show two moves that you can do to help promote the parasympathetic system and to help promote that balance so you're still working your body and you're still focusing on your body but you're helping finding that sweet spot and balance so I'm gonna show you two things that you can do. I wanna make sure that you can actually see. So one of them is a McKinsey press up. And in Cobra, it's like Cobra that you see or maybe do in yoga classes. So lying on your stomach with your arms out in front of your shoulders a little bit and a little bit wider than your shoulders. So you're plugging in. Taking a big inhale and then exhaling up. And just holding 10 seconds. So it's actually, you know, it's still working my arms, it's still working my core, but it's opening my heart, it's getting the blood flow. And instead of talking while you're doing it, keep your mouth closed, nice big deep breath, and put your tongue on the roof of your mouth. So and breaths and then raise. So you'd actually want to kind of keep flowing through that for probably 10 minutes. And then the other one is another thing that you may have seen or done in yoga or in another fitness class, but it is called a fish pose. So you're actually setting up your shoulders beneath, or your elbows beneath your shoulders and your hands straight down plugged into the ground. And then you actually open up, open up your chest, lifting as high as you can. And then the same thing, mouth closed, big inhales, big exhales, inhaling in the nose, exhaling out of the nose, keeping your mouth closed with your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Same thing. So holding that for 10 seconds, and or 10 minutes, I'm sorry holding it for 10 seconds and releasing and then working through it for you know 10, 20 minutes, you will actually feel the same results. Actually, you'll feel better results because this will promote more energy in your body. So you'll actually finish your workout or you know, I, I in some of my programs, it's actually called working in. So working out and working in. So you finish your work in and you have promoted energy in your body. So you actually finish and have more energy than when you started and you help facilitate 
better digestion. You help facilitate growth and repair of your muscles that you're always working. You help facilitate your immune functions. So these are things that we've really got to start thinking about, especially in the middle of something like a thyroid epidemic. And I, I'm, I kid you not, in the women that I talk to, so many of them are going through it. So you are not alone. And the major thing is, I'm definitely not saying don't, don't take the medications and don't do this, but look at your body holistically. So that all that means is to look at your body, your life, your thoughts, your emotions, everything as a whole picture and go from there. So throw everything you've got at it. Look into the things that you could be adding in to your diet to help promote uh, healthier immune functions or healthier thyroid. Look into the the moves that you could be doing to help promote a healthier or more balanced thyroid or whatever it is that you may have or be going through. Look at things as a whole and stop just thinking that you have to work harder and push harder and pound the pavement and do more hours and put in more hours. We've got to take a step back evaluate the system as a whole and then go from there. I hope this finds all of you well and is really helpful moving forward. I am always available for questions and to talk about this free of charge. It's not, you know, I don't, I don't charge just to talk about it and uh, maybe there would be a program or something that would be really helpful to you, but I am open to questions. I'm open to talking and I am more than happy to help in any way that I possibly can. Have a fantastic Wednesday and a fantastic week moving forward. I hope to talk to you all soon.